All right, we are back with another Consumer Confidential. As the summer winds down, it's always a good time to remember to refresh your medicine cabinet. The things that have been back there, they're probably expired. We all have them. So here to break down everything we need to stock up on is NBC News medical contributor, Dr. Natalie Azar. Good morning to you. Hi. Good morning, Chanel. Let's dig in and talk about, in fact, the last time we did a similar yeah. segment, I keep all of my medicine, or I did, above the microwave in the kitchen. Right. And I, which was kind of dumb. I admit. <laughs> um, so now we've moved them all. So yeah. <laughs> where should you keep them? In the bathroom? Or does no. it get humid? And it does. It does. I mean, I feel like everyone associates medicine with being in the bathroom for some reason, but it's not the greatest place because yeah. of the humidity from the shower and the temperature changes. You know, a cool, dry place uh, is the best place to store it. The kitchen is fine, but generally I would say maybe away from things that could be giving off heat. Yeah, see, or, I just wasn't really thinking about it. I mean, right, it's in a cabinet above, but the smoke. Yeah, and, or like yeah. the sink can even get a little moisture, but like a dry Dry, cool cabinet in the kitchen, I think, is okay. easily accessible. And okay. while we're on it, make sure it's above mm -hmm. level, right? You don't want little kids, not nothing below that kids mm -hmm. can get into. So you know how with food or certain things, when things yes. are expired, people let it go a little longer because yes. they assume... You know, there's a little wiggle room. Right. Let's say ye on that. So the rule of thumb, the safest thing to do is to not use expired medicines, period. Now... If you really dig into it, yeah. there's a lot of nuance there, right? So, for example, if you have a bad headache and your ibuprofen is, you know, two weeks expired, is it dangerous? Mm -hmm. Is it safe? Is it effective? Those are the kinds of questions that we ask ourselves. Of course, you can take a dry tablet probably a couple of weeks after the expiration date. A year, but you're thing, pushing it. Exactly. So then you start, the manufacturer only guarantees the safety and efficacy up until the expiration date. After that... Maybe you didn't store it in the right place, right? Yeah. Maybe something like that. And I think that the most important thing here is life-threatening med or life, you know, chronic illness Absolutely. medications, nitroglycerin, insulin, liquid medications. Got to go. Never, ever, ever after they expire. Make sure you refill before expiration. Okay, okay Dr. Good. Nat, yes. what should we have everyday type stuff you know, so, in the medicine? Cabinet? Yeah, so everyday stuff that, that I think some, maybe a, some of this is intuitive, maybe not so much. Mm -hmm. um, tweezers, yeah. right? Not because of your eyebrows. Splinters. But because okay. splinters, exactly. Ticks. Ticks, Ticks. okay? You don't want to get into a situation where you're like, oh, my God, we mm -hmm. don't have tweezers in the house. Sunscreen, 300, in the winter. 365 yep. days a year, a good reminder, put it on. And also have a thermometer right? Because you never know when someone's going to get sick. Your doctor mm -hmm. always wants to know, do you have a fever? You want to have a thermometer in hand. Mm -hmm. What about in an emergency? What things right. should we make sure we have? So here are the things, Dylan, that I would say that really every medicine cabinet should have at home. We have pain relievers, antihistamines, antacids, and antibiotic ointment. Mm -hmm. Now, look, all of these things, remember, this isn't, I, I always say this on, on our segments. Sorry, if, it's if just you're a really close picture. Who did what? Oh, she walked again? right in front of the camera. <laughs> but that one wasn't. You walked right in front of the camera during Dr. Natalie's segment. <laughs> I'm trying to be like Chanel. you, Craig. I'm sorry. Rain, rain <laughs> Chanel. Okay. Um, I always say with pain relievers, you know, you don't want to use them endlessly, right, without, right, without sure. your doctor being aware. And the antihistamine part, you never know when someone could be having an allergic Right. reaction in your home you want to have that obviously yeah. antacids antibiotic ointments are mm -hmm. um you know you can you can imagine i'm thinking of a german word can you imagine right. the antibiotic ointment i actually also recommend having it with a topical anesthetic okay. some, some lidocaine in it um especially for little kids with boo-boos yeah this is for i would assume adults and children that's for adults and almost children but we actually yes. did <laughs> this year which i thought was amazing our producer brandon uh -huh. had this idea to do a medicine cabinet for children oh, so good. i know and I think all of us who had little kids at one point will remember how important it is oh, to yeah. never be out of diaper rash, <laughs> oh, yeah. baby safe thermometers, the bulb suction, yep. oh, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, and also low dose medicine, right? I mean, our kids yeah. are not going to yeah. be taking those those tablets. Make sure you have baby and toddler, um, you know, sizes and doses available. Before we let you go, baking soda. Oh, yes. Okay. Roker keeps like a ten pound. <laughs> bag. Are you serious? A 10 pound bag yes. Of Arm and Hammer baking soda. And what do you use it and for? We use it for uh, uh, any kind of uh, burns or anything. Yeah, like that. we use it for upset stomachs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I use it for just, upset stomachs. Yeah, I mean, totally. Really? So anything. it's not just Volcanoes? for baking. Yeah. It's not just for baking. Obviously, you can put it in the refrigerator. We know that. Right. The thing that I love too is for stings. Yep. You can oh. make a paste like three parts baking soda, one part water. Um, you can you can brush your teeth with it. Mm -hmm. It can remove plaque. It's, it's not going to, you know, it doesn't have fluoride in it. Mouthwash. All right. um, so it has a lot of other, you know, you want to vet them. If you yes. Google it, you'll see an endless list right. of things that it can do. Um, but yeah, good. If you've got a gallon anymore. of vinegar and a bag of baking soda, I know. you can conquer the world. That is another segment. <laughs> yeah. I love that. that, that, love that. <laughs> All right. Dr. Azar, thank you.
Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.